Hello everybody, I hope you are well. So today's video features uh, part of an interview I did with the Aikido legend that is Robert Mustard Sheehan from Vancouver in Canada. So Robert Sheehan initially contacted me in response to a video I posted a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's developed into quite an interesting conversation. Now this is the first part of the interview and uh, it's pretty forthright. Um, he says what he thinks and I think there's a few things that we, we both comment about that might upset a few people but uh, we're just being honest about how we feel Aikido is at the moment and how we feel it's progressing. I hope you guys find this interesting. I'd be interested to hear any of your comments down below. And as always, smash the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching. Very good, cool. Yeah, well, again, I guess the big thing, probably some people don't know because we've never really met personally and stuff. And <clears throat> I guess people should know I reached out to you because I saw one of your rants on Facebook and I totally, totally agree with it. And we're going to touch on some of those things. But often when I do seminars and, and we talk, I, I often tell people that, you know, Aikido has a, a really bad reputation in terms of like kind of martial, the martial arts, so to speak. Uh, Steven Seagal gave us a bit of a, a boost a little bit until things changed a bit that way. I'm sure you know what I mean. But uh, but the truth is, it's Aikido's bad reputation is deserved. Um, and I have really strong opinions about, you know, I'm, I'm, I've never been in the military, so I don't profess to know about stuff like that. But uh, I'm kind of interested in Aikido. I'm kind of interested in the combative part, not really for self-defense, but the combative parts. Because that sets up, I think, a different mindset for the training that I don't see in a lot of dojos. What, what do you mean by not so much self-defense, but, but combative? What, what, can you brief, frame that? And, yeah, and what I mean by that, in the combative st standpoint, from the combative standpoint in the military, Duncan, you can only either kill the person, incapacitate them by structural damage, or, or knock them up by throwing them on their head or choking them out. Those are the only three things we talk about. You know, three things we talk about in combatives. That's all, right? And then turns to the military, they only worry about killing them because that's all, you know, once the enemy is incapacitated, they can't hurt you anymore. Right. Okay. Uh, so, so the combative means you're not reacting to, you know, so a lot of things with self-defense is, okay, you see people teach self-defense and they say he does a face punch and you block and then you grab here, he might grab... He blocks and you do this. So you're always reacting. And the truth is reacting is always too slow. Right? So for the combative part is more you, you take charge of the situation right away. Uh, and that also opens up, you know, things for people being a little bit silly or stupid. You know, people being too aggressive when they don't have to be in this and that. Like we have a guy on, he's an American, but he, you might have seen him on Facebook. And they call him Master Ken. And he says, if the guy comes up to you, you kill him. And one of his students says, well, what if he's just acting, asking for directions and stuff like that? Yeah. And, 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 and the truth is, there's, you know this yourself. You've been around for a long time. There's always posturing and escalations before usually, you know, in terms of street fights. There's always posturing escalation. There's none of that in combatants. You don't, you know, you don't threaten someone to shoot them because they're going to shoot you back. Right. right. And which is another thing in my idea, the idea of combatives. Like, it's not my idea. I stole it from, I saw a really good um, <clears throat> videotape that on the psychology of, 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 of shooting. And the guy said, the thing that most people forget is that, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're prepared to shoot someone, you have to be prepared to be shot. Sure. Of course. And, if, and if, you're, if you're prepared to stab someone, you got to be prepared to be stabbed and if you're prepared to punch someone you got to be prepared to be punched and i don't have a big history of violence or anything like that but i also know that everything we saw with our heroes like bruce lee and chuck norris and john claude Van Damme and steven seagal and everything even john wayne a little bit, it doesn't work that way you know and your your kind of rant about you know people saying if people are going to kick in this now you just have to be able to deal with it and the big thing is, you know, in the military, they talk about fight like you train and train like you fight. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, so that's that's why I, I reached out and I said I really agree with you and uh, I like it. I, I do appreciate that. I mean, just to give this a bit of um, reference for people, um, 
I will stick the link, I'm not sure which I'm facing, I'll put the link to the video um, up here so people can refer to it. But I, I, I saw a video of a very, very senior American, I think she's a Sheehan, she's a seventh Dan, I believe, um, demonstrating tin can. And, and I'm not putting myself out there as the world's technical expert. I mean, I've been around a while, but I mean, it, but this was a basic fundamental Taisabaki that white belt should know. And she was teaching Tenkan as a sweep, which it isn't. Yeah. And, and it's just, a, you know, and that's just, and I was just using that as an example of something that was, that I could point to, to, for, for me, the, uh, one of the things that's destroying the art is the, um, the lack of technical ability of the so-called senior people and, and what they're yeah. creating in their down. I mean, do you, I mean, for me, the question is what's going wrong with Aikido? And for me, that is one of the major factors. How do you feel? How do you feel? I totally, I totally agree. And the problem is, and like I said, when we talk about it uh, and, you know, I think a lot of Aikido people could do really well from getting punched in the face <laughs> because, the, <laughs> because the, the, the truth is, and, you know, in my opinion, I was, I was quite fortunate, I think, I, with my back, background before Aikido. And my first teacher, Kimeta Sensei, was very martial. And, and he also, his background was a little bit of karate too. But the problem with Aikido, and you're right, is most people can't block and they can't strike. And we get away with it sometimes and with this too much of the cooperative. And I only know Yoshinkan Aikido, Duncan. I, uh, we even had a guy yesterday visit our dojo from Aikikai, and he did a really great job because he tried to do it our way, which is the most important thing. Uh, but in Yoshinkan Aikido, the person doing the technique is called shte, and the person attacking is called uke. And I've also heard people, some people say, Nage Tori, I don't know about Tomiki Aikido. But if the reason why I say all these things are bad is because usually you don't have to strike hard, whatever, but you do have to strike correctly. And you can't punch like this, right? And, and you, can't, you can't do, we say, a front strike, shomenuchi. You can't do a shomenuchi like you're waving goodbye to an old friend or something or, or the Queen's royal wave. Is that, is that kind of, you know, the Queen's word? You can't do a shomenuchi like you're just waving away goodbye to someone. You don't have to hit so hard, though, but if you have a certain rank, yeah, you should be hitting hard. My students know if, when they go to punch me, they can hit me. If they hit me, I'm not going to get mad. But the reason why this stuff is happening, Duncan, in my opinion, is because there's too much of a cooperative uke where you just have to kind of just touch them and, and they'll fall down. And sometimes for the training, maybe that's okay because in Yoshin Kanai Kido for the basic techniques, it's really set. What 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 the person doing the technique and the attack or what they do, it's kind of set in stone, and we don't deviate from that because it's a training way. And you know this yourself. There's only one way to find out if you can knock someone out with Yubi Minage. Is you gotta knock them out, and I've had people try to knock me out with Yubi Minage. I'm a big guy. I'm still here, but I appreciated the power. But the worst thing in Aikido is when you have people that are strong and they have a partner who doesn't know really how to take the fall and they throw them hard anyways. I call those guys Aikido dickheads, <laughs> right? So um, this is mm. to my next question. Do you think that um, Aikido needs to evolve? Um, and I mean that specifically from the, uh, from, the test, from, from the technical point of view. Do you think that on, the, on generally speaking, that Aikido around the world needs to train the way it's trained, uh, ch uh, change the way it's training, and um, you know maybe start. Uh, I mean, uh, really, I was, really good question. Really, yeah. really good question. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't think so. I mean, there's a, such a thing as like as a dojo, dojo kind of atmosphere, dojo mentality. Uh, I can only do with what my teachers taught me. I believe it has to be a martial art foremost. It doesn't mean we all have to be killers, but it means. You have to proper strikes, proper blocks, proper execution, a technique. And, and then, you know, for example, like I said, 20 years ago, uh, in my dojo, if you couldn't fall, I would just tell you to go home because I was, I was young and stupid. And depending on who you talk to now, I'm still stupid, but I'm not young anymore. But, but I, there are some students in my 
my dojo now who are black belt don't fall flipping. We say flipping, like flipping. They don't flip particularly well. And, and I don't ask them to do it. They work around it because they're real assets to the dojo. And, <clears throat> and I guess the difference seriously is that what I believe, and I don't see it happening a lot, is that I have almost no problem with rewarding these people the rank if they've, if they've been an asset to the dojo, they try hard and they help. The difference is usually those people don't become teachers. Yes, okay. And, and the truth is, at least in my dojo, they, some of my students will never be responsible for teaching someone how to do a tenkan, right? Or how to stand in a posture. Um, and But they're great asses to the dojo. But I look around and the truth is, you know this yourself. If your teacher can't do it, you're not going to get it. This This stuff doesn't skip a generation and if they like it fine you know you can you can like playing golf but you'll never enter a golf tournament or anything like that but the thing is in golf you can't be a six degree black belt in golf no for sure right and the truth is i'm sure you've seen it i can show you people and stuff uh, i know people that have high kind of high rank and you look at it what they're doing is wrong yep. but i'm not going to argue with them about it because i mean everyone's you know everyone's in kind of entitled to their opinion but I don't like, and I'm, I, I, can't, I don't have it on video, so to speak, but uh, I don't like the mystery blocks in Aikido where the punch comes and you block from underneath and your whole body's open and you move your arm and your opponent just flies. Or no. you've probably seen, I've seen it where the teacher just touches the student on the shoulder. The guy screams like he's having a baby and, you know, and does like a triple backflip with five and a half twists, like in the Olympics and lands on the mat. And, and everyone's going, wow. And I'm thinking, it's not, ah, it didn't work. It doesn't work. Can I just take you back to something you said earlier? Um, yes. You were saying about there has to be a dojo culture. And, and uh, uh, I understand it, and I accept what you said about you know, a dojo being a safe place and providing an environment for everybody to train. Because not everybody wants to train hard. You know, we've got older students. Yeah. You know, you've got to. You know, and, and not everyone should. Yeah. But. Um, but you did you you opened by saying um, mentioning punches and blocks and so on. that was almost what I was referring to because I've been surprised at how few Aikido dojos actually formally teach things like punching. Virtually no one seems to teach kicking. Um, the blocks are just part of a technique, uh, but they're never actually yeah. formally. Um, broken down biomechanically with any kind of technical um, intention. It's just part of the... Again, yeah, like you said, then it depends on where the teacher where the teacher came from. Uh, I believe in strong strikes and strong blocks and strong attitude. Do you I formally teach striking in... Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, we practice. We don't do kicks. We don't do kicks. Oh, okay. No, I don't do kicks. And um, we don't really do... Uh, and again, it's based on personal experience, Duncan. We don't usually do defense against kicks because usually people just get mangled. Um, every time I did kicking with my teachers in Japan, I just ended up mangled. They looked real good, but I ended, I ended up mangled. And uh, and so, but I do teach kung fu proper. Yeah, I did it for about five years. Yeah. yeah, and even in traditional kung fu, we don't kick above the waist. No, usually no, traditional no. kung fu. So, yeah, and I did, you know, and then again, it's kind of cool talking about it in traditional Kung Fu schools. Uh, usually they don't have rank. And my school was very traditional. There's no rank. You just practice and you have to do all the forms. And if you do two person sparring and stuff, it's in the realms of, realms of the forms. And then we would wait for the teacher to leave. And then we would just beat the crap out of each other. And we didn't, we didn't have gloves or anything. So we just used bare fists and kicking and stuff. So uh, you just have to say punch and my nose starts bleeding from memories of those old days. And stuff. <laughs> but you know, because we were young and stupid, but, but I teach, I teach punching and strong striking and the correct blocks. And, and in my dojo, Duncan, you don't have to hit so hard, but we talk about intent. Yes, absolutely. So there's no heat, there's no heat seeking missiles when you punch. There's no punching so the hands this way, and if they push it, it goes back into your face. It's a strong punch. You know, I, I'm sure you had the same thing if because you're a teacher. The young guys, you just have to hit them hard. If 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 you don't hit them hard, they get all sulky and they don't like it. Some of the older people, you don't have to hit them so hard, but that punch has to be there. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, definitely. right. And, 
And I think, and, and, unfortunately, I think that puts you in the minority at the moment. This is one of the things that... Uh, oh, yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Do you guys do any form of um, Giawaza or, or Rendor? Oh, yeah, yeah. We yeah. do Giawaza, yeah. and it's still very structured, only because... Uh, that's just how I learned. That's how I believe it should be. Uh, I'm very good friends, actually very, very good friends with uh, with a teacher in Melbourne named Joe Tambu Shihan, mm-hmm. who's a brilliant Aikido guy. He's just brilliant. But he's also, uh, we, use, we use pounds and kilograms. And I think, I can't remember, he's only 59 kilograms and he's 5'3". Yeah. He's a lot faster than most people. So he can use the speed. I'm I'm 200 well 100 115 kilos and 180 centimeters. I've been told for a big fat guy I'm still pretty fast, which is nice for my ego. But the truth is I can't do the speed like Joe does, yeah. right? And so, but you can work around that, and eventually, if you have the right partner, you can do whatever you want. But we have set forms where you learn how to do the movements and techniques. And and in the dojo, we talk about it. And is we in Yoshinkan Aikido we say jiuaza, and jiu means free. Yeah. So, you know, so usually the English translation is freestyle. And I always tell people, uh, you can do whatever you want. It's freestyle. But I have a system I teach that sets up patterns for them to practice with. Because if they do, you know this yourself, if, if you tell somebody, yeah, well, off you go, go, just do whatever you want. They're not, they're not, they won't have a clue, even if they've done a little bit of training. Right. And then they get a bit stressed. So they end up doing the same technique over and over. And and when I teach you as the way I was taught, I teach it that you have to be able to pivot outside and you have to be able to pivot inside. Yeah. Because it's just for training. That's exactly how right. I break so, it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so do, up to we'll Shodan, you have to, we'll, you know, we ran Shodan, you have to. Sorry, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. Up to Shodan, you have to be able to pivot outside and inside. And I say, and for beginning, you don't sure, you're not sure what to do. So I set up, we usually start off with four techniques and then I add two and then I add two more. So by the end of this one Giawaza class, they'll be probably maybe doing eight techniques. Mm-hmm. You repeat that five times, you've done 40 techniques. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's interesting. And you move it inside and the inside and the outside line. That's exactly yeah. how from a, uh, yeah. we, we try, then I tell them, we try and define between technical training, which is you learning your, um, learning the mechanics of a technique. So it's structured yeah. and it's formalized and it's from a basic point of view. So you understand the leverage and the biomechanics and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Like absolutely, learning yeah. scales or chords on a musical instrument, you know? But yeah, it, absolutely. And, and, and the then you, you go from there. The, the applied version is often quite different because obviously, you know, yeah. in a fight, it's just ugly and randomized and not everything works. And quite often it becomes a short. So going the inside or the outside line um, you know, our, our kind of go-to is if you possibly can always go to the outside because you've got a better, absolutely. Got absolutely. A better chance but, of crossing someone up or going to the back. But it's, Absolutely. But, yeah, but it's just, I agree. But for just, training, for yeah. training in body movement, you want to be able to do both ways. And then, and then we tell them if you get stuck and get stressed, just forget about it. Just go back to the first technique and start over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've probably seen it. I've seen people get stressed in a test and all of a sudden they do the one technique over and over and over and over. And yeah. those people, they're not, they're not showing it here for the test, right? Uh, and, and, and in my whole 20, 25 years of teaching in Vancouver, I've never failed anyone for a test because usually we're a small dojo. So if they're not ready, I don't let them test. But if, they're, if they psychologically lose it, then I will. I almost stopped the test once, but they caught themselves. They made a mistake and they got all a little bit goofy. And once I was doing a test in the States and the person made a mistake and they got all red faced and started giggling and laughing. And afterwards, I said, uh, I was doing this as a favor for the teacher. I have to tell you, honestly, I will defer to the teacher. If it was my dojo, I would have stopped the test right away. I would have stopped the test and failed you because there's nothing wrong with making a mistake. As martial art, you make a mistake, but everyone does it all the time. How you handle it is really important. Absolutely. I think. So so there's there's uh, there's ways we train that allow us, hopefully, the right. And this is what I, I didn't say this. Uh, I say this. People who come to my seminar and have been in my dojo, I say this all the time. And I know why I studied martial arts. And I don't want to tell you my background because I don't want to make you cry because it's all kind of sad and stuff and might make a really good movie or something like that or whatever. But I studied martial arts to become strong and learn how to fight because I was a skinny, scared kid. All right. 
and I'm not skinny anymore, but I'm still kind of scared. And, uh, but, you know, and, and the, but the truth is everyone comes into, usually into my dojo because they want to get stronger, maybe learn how to defend themselves or whatever. The mystique of maybe they read about, uh, you know, Uishiba Morihei or whatever, because in my Aikido, because I, I wanted to get a black belt because I thought that if you got a black belt, that meant you were really good. And like I said, in traditional mar Chinese martial arts, you just, they don't have rank. So I went to watch Aikido and I didn't like it. And I read, I read about Aikido. I thought this is fantastic. Throwing people kind of without touching them. This is fantastic. And, and the teacher just looked at me because I was a young kid. Um, and I, so I didn't like it. It didn't look strong to me. So I went to watch Kendo. I said, oh, I have to do this. And I did Kendo for five years. And the, the irony there, Duncan, is when I got Shodan and, and Nidan in Kendo, they don't wear belts in Kendo. <laughs> so I, I, didn't get, I didn't get my belt. So, and then I just luckily happened to do Aikido, which I knew after a month or so, Aikido was the martial art for me. I kind of knew it. And 44 years later, but getting back to what I was saying, the truth is people will come into my dojo wanting to become strong, maybe wanting to learn how to defend themselves, you know, maybe learning how to fight, but not trying in the least to cultivate that martial mindset that would allow you to use the technique. Right. And and I was talking once to one of the students and they said, well, how will I know when I'm ready, you know, mentally? And I went, bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you're not ready. <laughs> All right. And, you know, so but but I think with with the proper strikes, proper blocks, proper application of the technique, you learn that kind of. Uh, confidence in the body power where maybe you can block, right? And I've I've actually set up a small Asian woman with the proper posture where she, we say Shomenuchi where she's blocking and she's had five people pushing on her and they couldn't push her over just because of her posture was correct, right? So, and, and I said the reason, and I, I was saying to everyone, the reason why this is important is she has the confidence now she'll be able to stop anyone's strike. Because that she has that confidence, and 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 like I said, she's she's learning to block correctly, and people are learning to strike correctly. And you have to have, I think, and then you can go as far as you want to go. And you you know this yourself. With some students, you know, they're the last one in the dojo. They're the first one out. They come twice a week. They pay their fees. Great, they're great assets to the dojo. They're fine, but you know, they're just going to be their progress is going to be very slow, and they almost don't care. And, that, and that's that's almost that's fine too right i mean my senior student farshad he's a fifth thumb now and for the first eight years of aikido i used to have two classes at night so 40 20 classes 20 classes a month right no 10 yeah no 40 classes a month he did 40 classes a month every month without missing for eight years <laughs> You should see this. You should see this young man. I, I'm biased, of course, but he is the most skilled, best young Yoshinkan teacher on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Right. And he's 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 brilliant and he's kind. He's a bit stubborn. I don't know where he got it from, but he's a bit stubborn and strict. Uh, so. At least there is some hope then. He's the only one out of, out of how many people I've had. And what I have in my dojo, Duncan, that's almost a phenomenon. Is all my guys, usually when they get showed on, that's when they quit. So I have I have a couple of guys who are uh, third Q and second Q. I told them, you're never getting showed on because I'm worried you're going to quit. So for the next 10 years, you're going to be brown belt because I'm worried about your quitting. <laughs> 